Go Jackers! Uh, hello all and welcome to Rec Talk. Uh, I can't get the videos out fast enough, so a ton of news hitting kind of unexpectedly. Uh, if you didn't see the previous videos, um, we did make three um, staff changes. So our director of, I think, player development, I don't remember his name. Um, but the big thing is uh, defensive line coach Larry Knight and our assistant head coach of defense, uh, David Turner, were, were let go uh, yesterday, which came as a surprise. You know, the defense has been a staple for the team. It's, you know, the main reason we were able to win four games after Key took over, and people were kind of scratching their heads saying, well, I don't really understand. Like, we, we must be making some big moves. Uh, and we have made some moves, and I'll leave that up, you know, I guess for you guys to – to decide how big they are. So, um, biggest news is Marco Coleman is coming back from Michigan State. Uh, Marco Coleman was at Georgia Tech from 2019 to 2021. And I'm almost certain that he just had a fundamental difference in philosophy of coaching in football with Jeff Collins. Left, went to Michigan State, um, and now he's coming back. So, uh, this is exciting news. I, I definitely think this is an upgrade, and that's nothing you know bad to say about Larry Knight. Um, but th there's some things to be excited about with Marco Coleman. Uh, everyone was excited. Who was a Tech fan when he came the first time? Um, and I guess critics of this might be saying, well, you know, the defense was horrible when he was here. But I don't think we can, you know, after seeing what Andrew Thacker has done since Collins has left. I mean, really the entire defense, it's hard to judge uh, any of these coaches while they were coaching under Jeff Collins. It seems like there's not any coach that could be successful um, under how Jeff Collins was running things. But anyways, this isn't a bash uh, Jeff Collins video. Um, we're going to get into the staff and how many national title rings are on this staff. Um Marco Coleman is the only person on staff that was on the 1990 national championship team. So he was a sophomore in 1990 when Georgia Tech won the national title or shared it uh, with Colorado. Um, and he was drafted 12th overall by the Miami Dolphins in the 1992 uh, draft. And he was rookie of the year um, his first year in the league. He spent 14 seasons in the NFL um, he's a Georgia Tech Hall of Famer, um, you know, th so this is a guy that knows about the NFL. This is a guy who knows what it takes to be successful in the NFL, um, and that's going to, you know, that's a big recruiting point. That's a big development point. This is not just someone saying, hey, this is what I've seen other people players do. You can say, hey, this is what I did to be successful uh, in the NFL, Um so his playing his playing career speaks for itself. Now, does that mean he's going to be? Does that mean he's a good coach? No. Uh, most coaches or most successful coaches weren't successful players. Um, but anyway, so he started his coaching career actually under John Gruden uh, with the Raiders in 2018. Um, after that, uh, single year with the Raiders. Uh, I believe he was like a defensive assistant, uh, assistant defensive line coach. Uh, he came over to Georgia Tech. Just Jeff Collins was able to bring him his first year in 2019 through 2021. Uh, he was de defensive end coach. Uh, I think he was even moved to like the entire defensive line coach at one time too. Um, and like we discussed, evidently he had a fundamental difference of opinion. Um, on how to coach with Collins. He goes to Michigan State. And if you look at what he's done in Michigan State, people have been talking about it in the Discord, um, actually in Bryce's Discord. I didn't see it in mine. But um, he he has done a really good job at recruiting um, good defensive linemen while he's the, the year he's been at Michigan State. He's recruited three four-star uh, defensive linemen. That has led to a 21 overall class. They have a number eight transfer rating at Michigan State for this year. And uh, their highest rated recruit is actually an edge rusher. He's a 95 overall. So he's at 95 overall, four star. That's a high four star bumping into um, a five star kid. So um, I do think he's a good coach. I, I do think it's an upgrade. 
I am excited to see him come, and I think it's going to be, um, you know, a major benefit in recruiting to have him on the staff. Um, you know, if we're going to continue to, or I, I can't say continue to be successful, if we're going to start being successful, making bowls, competing for our conference, it's going to start on in the trenches on the O and D line. You know, we're going to have to win those battles. You know, when our defense and offense are on the field, so. Uh, you know, I think definitely a great a great hire uh, for us. Now the other hire we made, and this is probably the most perplexing thing, um, because I had just done a video, like I couldn't have timed this kind of, I guess, any better. Uh, that Jason Seymour had been nominated for uh, linebacker coach of the year for Football Scoop. So we, we make the hire of Kevin uh, Scherer. I hope I'm saying his name right. It's not someone who's, excuse me, been on my radar. Um, Kevin Scherer's a linebacker coach, <laughs> though. Uh, and we already have what seems to be a decent uh, linebacker coach. But let's just look into Kevin Scherer. So we hire Kevin Scherer. Um, he was most recently let go uh, in the 2021 season by the New York Giants where he was a linebacker's coach. Uh, and I think the year previous he was the uh, inside linebackers coach. Um, but he played at Alabama in his playing career from 1993 to 1995. Um, I think he, he bounced around in his coaching career to, in some high school gigs, but um, he has two national title rings. He was the director of player development at Alabama from 2010 to 2012. Alabama won national titles in 2011 and 2012. Um, so he's got two rings. Um, in 2013, he was hired as the defensive coordinator and the defensive backs coach for uh, South Alabama, um, where they were second in total defense and second in points per game or points allowed uh, in their conference. So, you know, had success there. Um, he was then picked up by Mark Rick uh, in 2014 and remained on staff throughout the transition to Kirby Smart. So, we're seeing this trend time and time again with getting coaches from really successful programs uh, or with experience at really successful programs, particularly with Alabama and the University of Georgia. Now, I'm a tech guy. As much as it, you know, at times pains me to say, Georgia has probably the best program in the country right now. They're recruiting better than anyone else, though Alabama had – not only one of the best recruiting classes this year, uh, or had the number one overall recruiting class year, they had one of the best recruiting classes ever this year. I think they signed seven uh, five stars. But we're getting all these coaches with ties to both of these places that have had um, an incredible amount of success in college football. Um, so anyways, he stays uh, with Georgia. He's their linebackers uh, coach. Um through, through the transition to Smart, so he's there from 2014 to 2016. He's then hired as the defensive coordinator at Tennessee uh, following his colleague Jeremy Pruitt when Pruitt was hired at Tennessee. Now, we all know that that went quite horribly. Uh, they were caught cheating, McDonald's bags left for players, though now that's legal, so I don't even know how that's viewed anymore. Um, I guess there would be nothing wrong with giving a player a McDonald's bag full of cash um, but it was against the rules at the time. Um, so he's there for 2017, uh, to 2019. Uh, he was also like their interim special teams coordinator. Um, and then he's hired, um, by the giants, um, as their linebackers coach. Um, I didn't even look like I, I'm, you know, it's really difficult to kind of judge, uh, coaching coaches transitions from the pros to, uh, college football, and I believe their head coach was, they had a head coaching change in the time he's there too, so, you know, when you have a head coaching change, generally they want to bring their own guys in, that's what we're seeing with Brent Key right now, so I don't necessarily think him being let go by the Giants um, says he was doing uh, a horrible job, but a guy with a lot of experience and a lot of Power 5 experience, um, and success there. I believe in the time he was at Georgia, I mean, he put, he coached four or five different kids <clears throat> that ended up going in the NFL. Um, so, you know, as, as great as Jason Seymour is, 
you know, it's not necessarily clear to me that this is an upgrade, but he's but when you bring someone in as a position coach that's been a defensive coordinator at a Power Five school in the SEC, you know, it's kind of hard to say that that's not necessarily an upgrade. Um, so, uh, who was it? Russell Johnson, I believe. We'll put the the graphic up. Um, his tweet. And I don't know where he's getting this from, but this is his, um, as he sees the staff being laid out. Um, let's just go through it. Obviously, head coach Brent Key. Brent Key has a national title ring with Alabama. Here we come full circle. Uh, Buster Faulkner. And, and look, I've seen a ton of comments, a ton of stuff. Buster's just going to go to Georgia. Buster's a traitor. Um, look, <coughs> If, if Georgia Tech ends up winning like nine games next year and we have a top 10 offense in the country, no one's gonna no, no one's gonna care that he's coaching the University of Georgia right now. I can't do anything about it. All I'm concerned about is moving forward, having a successful program here at Georgia Tech. Um, so I'm, I'm not concerned with any of that. Speaking of uh, C dog, I'll be on C dog's channel live streaming the game uh, Monday. Um, Get Buster Faulkner. Now, he has at least one national title ring from last year. Uh, could have two. Uh, quarterbacks coach Winky, uh, obviously retaining him. He has a national title ring from playing at Florida State. Um, so there's three national title rings right there, possibly four on staff. Um, wide receivers coach uh, Josh Crawford. This is an up-and-coming guy. Uh, out of Western Kentucky, but a lot of interesting things that he likes to do with spacing and wide receivers. Offensive line coach Jeep Wade, who's come from App State. App State had a, you know, they tailed off at the end of the year, but they had a, a in my opinion, successful running game. Um, didn't give up a lot of sacks either. Um, defensive coordinator Andrew Thacker, um, who is probably – a rising star defensive coordinator. Now I know people that aren't tech fans, which I don't think there are many that <coughs> watch the video anyways, would probably disagree. Um, watch out for the star of Andrew Thacker. If Georgia tech's defense continues to have the success uh, that they have uh, had. Um, we just talked about the um, hire of Kevin Scherer. Um, so, Per Russell, uh, and and, I, and again, I don't know where if he's getting this, if this is speculation, but it would make sense. Uh, Kevin Shear will be the co-defensive coordinator and the linebackers coach, and this is going to be important. You know, we have some really good linebackers coming in out of the portal, and Braylon Oliver and Andre White. So um, these, this was probably the two, the two best players in Charlie Thomas and Ely that were on our entire team. Maybe you could argue Clayton Powell Lee and, and Brooks were a better duo, but um, both those linebackers are all ACC, and it would be really nice to continue that, you know, have two more all ACC players in the next year. Um, but Kevin Scherer is going to take over linebackers, co-defensive coordinator. We just talked about Marco Coleman taking over the defensive line. Uh I assume we retain defensive back coach uh, Travaris Tillman. He was a uh, Georgia Tech player. Uh, he was drafted, I think, 58th overall in the second round. Um, who was he drafted by, the Broncos or something? But uh, another kind of up-and-coming guy. Uh, so Kevin Scherer has two natties, and Marco Coleman has a natty, and he has a natty with the Georgia Institute of Technology. <clears throat> it appears that we're going to move Jason Seymour to special teams coordinator. Um, which doesn't necessarily break my heart either. Like I hate Larry Knight and David Turner leaving, but I am also happy to see Brent Key kind of putting the personal stuff aside and really saying, what do we need to do to be a better football team? Despite how I personally feel about people. Um, this is a mistake. I think some, some coaches have made where they hang on to guys too long um, when they really need to make a move. So, you know, there's nothing you, I think you can point to with Larry Knight and David Turner that makes you say, um, oh, man, we definitely needed to fire these guys. But I think looking at the hires, it's like, well, yeah, it makes sense um, that if we were able to get these guys, we're a better football team now than th the previous staff. Um, so 
it is, you know, it will be nice to have one guy, Jason Seymour, you know, did a decent job last year, special teams coordinator. I'm sure he'll still help out uh, with the linebackers position or even, possibly even another position on defense. Um, but it'll be nice to have someone to really focus on that special teams role that's really been a sore spot for Georgia Tech in the past. Um, another Alabama guy, Aaron Joe, who is our general manager. He's going to be huge in recruiting Flores. I know Alabama hated to see him go. He was a big part of putting together the number one recruiting class that Alabama had this year. Um, and I know Nick Saban had a lot of nice things to say about him. And uh, I haven't talked about him in a while, but our, our offense, or not our offense, our athletic director, Jay Bat, <coughs> another guy that's come from Alabama. You know, all these guys from Alabama and Georgia have seen what it takes to reach the pinnacle of success in college football, and they're on our staff. So from what I count, uh, we've got six national title rings uh, for coaches on staff. Uh, if Georgia wins another one, uh, we, we, there would be seven. Buster Faulkner w would have two. So, um, And also, Jay Bat is doing a lot of great things. Georgia Tech has started a new NIL uh, thing. I'll link it in the description where – and I'm actually looking at doing this too. Um, there's a thing where you can support athletes. So there's different terraces like zero to a thousand, a thousand to five or something like that. And you can choose different things you want, like a personal interview, autographed memorabilia that goes to those athletes. There's also monthly, like a monthly subscription that runs from like 20 to 500. That's all for the NIL initiative. Uh, and I'm looking at, um, donating enough that possibly I can get an interview with one of the athletes. That's one of the, um, one of the options. So leave a comment and who you would like to see me get an interview from, and I'll see kind of what's involved with that. Um, we also, uh, blew out the water, our two and a half million dollar fundraising initiative. And we've now hit 4.8. Um, so that man, there's just a lot of, of great things going on. Um, with Georgia Tech football right now that we, we've never seen before, right? Um, I think we're making all the right decisions in our staff changes. You know, um, it looks like Key and Bat are really looking at things, you know, setting aside emotions, what's the best um, decisions we can make with staff hires to make Georgia Tech football um, as successful as it can be. Um, and, and I think that's what you have to do um, for sure. So, um, tell me what you think about it. Do, do you agree? I know that I know a lot of people like Larry Knight and David Turner. Do you agree with these staff changes? Do you think Georgia Tech's trending in the right direction? Who do you want? Who would you like to see me get an interview from? Uh, donate some NIL money to. Let me know. Um, also, uh, hopefully, I earned a like and subscribe. It helps the channel. Live show, live call-in show this Sunday. Um, and y'all have a good day. Talk to you soon.